but you look at it in the long term. We look at like early adopters to social media and how that changed photographers' careers or just people in the media in general. And I look at the NFT space the same way. You gotta be able to risk it. You gotta risk it for the biscuit. And if you really wanna do this and you wanna be serious about it, you gotta have something at stake, right? It's easy to say you wanna travel and then never buy the plane ticket. But once you've bought that plane ticket and it's a tangible thing that you've invested in, you're dedicated to make it work. Welcome to Airdrop, the show that will help you understand what NFTs are, how they work, how to use them, and all that good stuff. I'm Rallyon, and I'm here with my good friend Phosphorus, and we're going to make sure your photographer friends never have to shoot another wedding ever again unless they really, really want to. Today we're talking to Levi from Of All Nations Adventurers. Levi is a freelance adventurer, journalist, and photographer. He's a freelance adventurer? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Usually his job involves climbing photography, and his work has been featured in numerous magazines all across the world. And now he's entering the world of Web3 and NFTs with his community of all nations adventurers. Recently, he just got back from a trip to Alaska where he took 20 photos, and those photos became the collection of NFTs for this community. Today, we're going to dive into how Levi got into photography and NFTs, how did this Alaska trip go, and what was the process of minting these photo NFTs? and how to foster community within the Web3 space. And obviously a whole bunch of other stuff. Like this was a really, really cool talk. And one of one of my favorite things that we talked about was his process and how it's completely disrupting the way commissions work for photographers. Like he's turning the whole regular system of customer and photographer on its head. And it's really, really awesome. I really like what Levi said about you got to risk it for the biscuit. Yeah. How you just got to put yourself out there and try to do something new in the space. He obviously worked in print journalism before, getting his photos printed, and he wanted to do something in the NFT space. And ironically enough, this is not his first project. His first project fell completely flat, but he, did, but he didn't give up. Instead, he decided to build a community and try again. So that, I think, is really exciting. Yeah. You just got to put your whole self out there and see what happens sometimes. Okay, before we get started, we just want to remind you that Levi is a freelance photographer, and that means he's always on the move. So he spared an hour of his time to talk to us, and he just did the interview on his phone outside of a climbing gym in Dallas, Texas, uh, because that's the cool kind of life that freelance adventurers live. So if you hear kids playing or birds chirping or whatever in the background, let's just roll with it because... That's how he rolls. Make sure you follow Airdrop on Twitter at Airdrop Show. Make sure you follow along YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. And also please share this episode with the person you know takes amazing photos. All right, let's drop in. All right, today we have Levi Harrell. How are you feeling, man? Where are you? I'm, I'm outside of a climbing gym here in Dallas, Texas, just doing a little bit of freelance work. I'm feeling great. It's great to be on with you guys. Wow. That was that was like a really cool sentence spoken. <laughs> and it was very, a very creative person sentence to say, oh, I'm outside of a climbing gym. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, thanks for being on the show. We're really excited to talk to you. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here and talk to you guys about this space. Awesome. All right. We're going to start with the question we always start with, which is, how would you explain what an NFT is to somebody who has just no idea what this whole world is about? Right. To me, what I'm describing an NFT to someone who's brand new is it is a digital media asset that we have assigned a monetary value to that is traded and sold online. Super simple, basic terms. It's just something that lives online that we can assign a value to that people either buy or trade. I think that was the most concise answer we've ever gotten from, from anyone. I've had to explain this to a lot of people who are much older than I am, and that's the most effective way that I have found so far. What do they say to you when you say that? Well, you know, it's easier for a photographer to relate to these things, and those are the people that I'm really talking to about this, because we live in a world of fine art sales, right? And so I can approach somebody and say, this is like a Sotheby's sale. This is like a fine print auction. 
we're just changing the medium. We're just moving from a physical, tangible print to a digital one. And so they understand that premise. They understand that we're just moving a sale from a physical sale to a digital sale because all of those things are, they're also non-fungible, right? Print is, you know, it's worth what somebody is willing to pay for it. And that's all an NFT is as well. I'm assigning it a value and you as the market can decide whether or not you think it's worth that. Man, that's really good. I like that. So how did you get into photography? Let's get your origin story. How did you start doing this? It's a wild one. It's it's a wild one, boys. You're going to want to strap in for this. Uh, so Oh, I'm ready. Yeah, so I started out as a person who just loved adventure and loved travel, but I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up in Missouri in the United States, which if anyone knows is flat land. There's not really much to do there in the ways of adventure. And so I studied at university. I studied intercultural communications, how different cultures interact with each other. I was just very interested in getting out of where I was at. And so at the age of 23, after working as an industrial sales rep, I sold steel-toed work boots. It doesn't get much more Midwestern than that. I sold everything I owned, and I moved to Hawaii with a camera. And I knew I wanted to be in media. I wanted to take photos, but I didn't know where to start. So what I would do is I would trade photos and media in exchange for a discounted rate at hostels discounted rate for skydiving, you name it, whatever it was, I would try and hustle and I would trade for a lower rate. And I lived in Hawaii for about three and a half months. From there, I bought a one-way ticket to the Polynesian Islands, French Polynesia, and I lived in Tahiti. And then I went to Bora Bora, then I went to Morea, and I would do the same thing until I had enough of a profile, enough of a portfolio that I was getting nights for free. I island hopped, for about four or five months. And I ended up in New Zealand where I had a working holiday visa. And that basically allowed me to work part-time up to 30 hours a week and live in country for a year. And I really just wanted to hone my craft and get better at what I was doing. So I got a job at a camera store, you know, photographic prints, selling cameras, stuff like that. And really just getting into the nitty gritty of photography and understanding the, the more advanced principles. And I did that for about three and a half years, actually. I just worked at that camera store and I started going out and shooting, taking as many photos as I could, just trying to understand the craft through volume. And then I ended up being fortunate enough through working with different organizations and different companies, just trying to build that portfolio. I was asked to shoot the New Zealand National Climbing Series. And so I shot wow. rock climbing. Yeah, so I shot rock climbing, um, and that was my that was my end. That was my niche, and so I shot for the national climbing series, and I ended up working for uh, the local branch of the North Face in New Zealand, and then Patagonia, and then some of the larger outdoor brands. To the point where I needed to come back to the U.S. and work with the bigger brands in the the main market, because what I was realizing is all of these photographers were being shipped into New Zealand to shoot assignments and then they were just coming back home. They were being brought from the US. And having the ability just to go back to the US at any time, I ventured back to the US, bought a truck camper, one to go inside the cab of a truck, and I just left. I just started traveling full time. So I based out of Boulder, Colorado at the time, and I would just go on any adventure that I could find that was related to climbing, mountaineering, hiking, you name it. So I was a nomad, a digital nomad, and I would just travel around taking photos and creating content and connecting with other adventurers and following their stories to the point where I was writing for magazines. I was writing for Climbing Magazine and Outside Magazine. And I was doing in the industry what we call the mills. So countries or companies would send me on a trip to review their product or to promote their country. And so I would get these crazy adventures. And so that's kind of how it all started. Now I'm able to do it full time. And I just spend about seven, eight months out of the year, just traveling around, following around adventurers and telling their stories. So living the dream, basically. <laughs> I'm trying to, man. You know, it's, it's too short to do anything else. That is so cool how you just picked up and just did the thing. I, I don't know. I really admire that. You know, you have to. There's, you gotta, you got to take the jump. You know, it translates really well to the NFT space in my mind because this is new. Uh, you look at it in the long term. We look at like early, 
early adopters to social media and how that changed photographers' careers or just people in the media in general. And I look at the NFT space the same way. You've got to be able to risk it. You got to risk it for the biscuit. And if you really want to do this and you want to be serious about it, you've got to you got to have something at stake, right? Like it's it's easy to say you want to travel and then never buy the plane ticket. But once you've bought that plane ticket and it's a tangible thing that you've invested in, you're you're dedicated to make it work. And so I approach everything the same way. I I agree with that wholeheartedly. I feel like you just alluded to something really there with how getting into social media early did change a lot of photographers livelihoods in their lives. How did you get into NFTs? Because I do think you're onto something here, how NFTs will also change the game for photographers as well. So how did you get into it? Well, you know, honestly, I uh, was fortunate enough just to stumble into it. I had been curious about NFTs for some time, like most photographers, because you look and see some of these sales that are taking place and you're going, well, how do I get in on this? You know, this is, this is the wave, right? How do I get on the right side of it? You look at things, you look at NFTs now being sold at Sotheby's and like crazy price tags being, you know, attributed to these NFTs, but you have no idea where to start. And that's kind of where I was at for, you know, six, seven months. And then I was lucky enough through a family friend to be introduced to the fine folks who run Byzantium. And this is like the, you know, beta stage of their testing program. So there was like four projects that had been listed. You know, the website was brand new within the month. And I sat down with Plutus and with Obsidian and was like, hey, I have lots of questions. You know, what does this mean? How does this work? And they sat on the phone with me for like an hour or two hours and really just walked me through everything to the point where I felt comfortable with at least testing the waters out. So that was my initial investment with NFTs and getting into that space was just a family friend saying, hey, I've got these other colleagues that I've worked with before who are venturing into this space and this newer currency. Would you be interested in you know, having a sit down chat? And after talking to them, I was like, this is a no brainer right? This is an easy investment for me to invest my time and my energy into and see what type of returns I can make on that investment. Okay. So everyone on the podcast so far has always talked about Plutus at least once, the guy, which I think is the really myth, funny. The legend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, I mean, he was He's, on our first episode too. So that's kind of like, it's kind of funny just to hear his name pop up over and over and over and over again. The man is so giving. So the one thing that's really interesting about my story in NFTs is it's very different in the sense of my first project wasn't successful. I went on and in my mind, it was like, I have to get something out right now, like unpolished, unrefined. I'm just going to get it out there and see what happens. Right. And yeah, t- yeah, yeah. Tanked, had no community, had no understanding of how this world worked. And so I just put it on there. And of course, you know, there was no promotion. There was no nothing. And it didn't do very well. And it was easy to be discouraged and it was easy to say, you know, oh, well, this is just sham. You know, these, everyone's only interested in, you know, profile picture projects. There's no space for me here. And I had talked to Plutus again. He was like, you know, let's, let's really like, let's invest some time. Let's take a, take a breather and like, let's build a community. Like you have some really great stuff. You know, I've got a small Instagram following. He's like, let's try and bring some of those people over who are really interested in your work. And that's where we see version two with my of all nation adventurers, where I started realizing there were so many people on the stacks network who were travelers who were super interested in, you know, adventure and getting out and seeing the outdoors and, you know, visiting new places. And I was like, you know, there's enough people here. Let's, let's try and build a community around this. Let's just celebrate the fact that we're all adventuring into a new thing here with stacks and with NFTs. Let's translate this over to, you know, photography. And we've built this really great community. And that's all Plutus One working with me and my shortcomings in the technology world and creating a space for me as a new creator that wasn't there for me at the beginning. Okay. I don't know how I got involved in the All Nations Discord, but I got there really early. And I, I saw some of your work and I knew that you had something special that There wasn't a lot of photography done currently in the Stacks ecosystem yet. And I knew that fine art and landscape photography go hand in hand. And that's what NFTs do so well. So I knew there was something here, but I didn't know how I got it. I can't can't remember how I got into it or what's happening there. But you just finished your Alaska series. 
you went to Alaska, you came out with about 20 photos, which you put together as NFTs. And the Discord you have is actually pretty small for the Discords I'm seeing with NFTs, which is really interesting. But you minted out. Can you tell us about that adventure, how you came up with that idea, how it went, and how you're feeling about it? Yeah, so the adventure was amazing. I mean, I truly believe that I am the best version of myself when I'm traveling. Food tastes better. I sleep better. You know, everything in life just is more enriched in my mind. And so I knew I wanted to market adventure. And I was already committed to going to Alaska at this time for another work assignment. I was there for Climbing Magazine, shooting an editorial piece about the Valdez Ice Festival. It's an ice climbing festival that happens over a three-day period. So I had a plane ticket there and a plane ticket back. I got to choose what days that I flew. So I said, you know, let's just make it an extra two weeks in Alaska. And I'll try and sell some NFTs while I'm there. I'll, I'll bring people along for this adventure, not knowing how it would work, but I knew that I wanted to build a community because the projects that I had seen that were successful had a really engaged community. And so I built a Discord out about a month before I left with very little expectation of people actually joining. But, you know, I thought we need a place that we can all get together and talk about what we wanted to do. And I wanted to engage people in this project. I didn't want it to be one of those where you sat on the sidelines and you weren't an active participant. So I asked the Discord, what should I do when I'm up there? What do you want photos of? You know, what do you know about Alaska? And it was really cool to get feedback and to make my community feel like they could be a part of that adventure with me. They wanted photos of the Northern Lights. And so I booked, you know, a car so that I could travel to the Arctic Circle where I was guaranteed to see the Northern Lights and be able to take those photos for them. They were really interested in, you know, being around the sea and getting some of the mountainous shots. And so i booked a plane ticket so I could, you know, take photos out of a two-seater plane over the Alaska range. The whole idea was not to make money on this. It was to engage the community and see if we could make this thing work. And I think that minting out was proof of that. It was proof that we had a unique novel idea that people were interested in. And I, I don't think it's ever about me making money as much as it is me creating a product that brings this community together all around something that we're really excited about. And then if they, if they get the opportunity to get a really cool shot or have some wall art that they can be proud of as well, like I, that's just an added bonus. But for, for me, really, it's just this community and building out something that we can all share in and all be a part of and celebrate each other's victories. That's amazing. I mean, we hear it over and over and over again. And I, I hope our listeners are hearing it as well. Community is everything oh, in the NFT 100%. space. So how did you go about building this community? Like what were the first steps that you had to take? Like what did that look like to, you know, you make a discord and that is simple enough, but what is it, what goes into building a community like that? Engagement, 100% engagement, personal engagement. As a photographer, you're a salesman, right? You're selling your product. Yeah. And so it was connecting with people on uh, Twitter. It was connecting with other people in discords that we were already members of, right? So I was part of Byzantium because I had released one project before. And so it was engaging with other people and, you know, seeing what they were interested in. Are there enough people who are interested in adventure to even warrant selling these NFTs, you know? And then it was getting onto my, onto Twitter and seeing who's liked my post, who, who else is engaging with Byzantium, who's in the stacks community. And then it was getting a part of other people's projects. It would be so narcissistic to look at my project and be like, oh, this is the epitome of fine art yeah. stacks. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so it was getting into Crash Punks. It was getting into Megapon. It was getting into these other projects and connecting with people there with what they were excited about. And then naturally, as you start talking to more and more people, they ask, well, what are you doing here? What projects do you have? And then I was able to introduce them and organically, they were able to decide whether or not they wanted to be a part of the project. Our Discord is very small, but the people who are in it are very interested in what we're doing. There's nobody who's in there trying to like cash grab or who's trying, you know, to sell their own stuff, really. It's people who are just interested in travel and we can all share that together. So, I mean, that's, it's really cool in my regard, in, in that regard. We're not a pumpy Discord. We don't, we're not really in there to, you know, mess around. It's just, we're excited to talk about, you know, travel and adventure. 
That's awesome. I need to join this Discord. What am I doing? I'm, I'm wasting my time over here. Yeah. So you mentioned your first NFT collection and you said it didn't really go well. What did you get out of that? If somebody was like, yeah, I'm thinking about making an NFT collection, what are the lessons that you learned with that first mint that you would want them to know about? I think there's three key things. One, community. I didn't have a community built around it. I just figured if I right. put it on the website and it was unique that it would sell. Two, I tried to make something that I thought other people would like and not something that I felt was true to my own art. Wow. You know, there's so many things where I'm like, oh, okay, well, people like these profile picture projects. They like stuff that's pixelated. Maybe I'll incorporate that somehow. So what I did was I took 35 millimeter images, scanned them so they were digital, and then I pixelated certain parts of the image thinking, Everyone likes pixel art here. That's what's really popular. So I'm just going to do this. And it's honestly, it was more of a show piece, right? It's like something that I thought would sell, but it really didn't have a whole lot of heart and soul into it. Yeah. I've seen that. Okay. That's you. I was wondering. That's me. I was like, okay. So those are your first ones. All right, cool. So when you're nice and famous. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Those will be the ones that will go. Right. <laughs> so and I've left them up because of that reason of like, this is something that's completely removed from what I do now. But I was... You know, it was something that I thought would be popular, but it wasn't true to what I do on the day to day basis. It was something that I thought would be unique, but it wasn't me. And so that was, that was something that taught me a lot and one perseverance of like, just because your first project doesn't sell, doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It doesn't mean that nobody likes your art. It, you know, and then the other thing was I created in this new piece, something that's true to me and the community that we've created. It wasn't something that was supposed to be a one-off sell. You know, again, just circling back to that community aspect, you, you need that community aspect so that you can have continuous growth and have continuous products. This first one that I did, it didn't have those aspects to it. It was, it was a one sale and then, you know, I would drift into the Ethereum and be done. <laughs> so it, it was cool to see how much better this, my recent Alaska project did because we built a community around it. I mean, it's clear as day. You're preaching to the choir right now. That was so good. I just love the fact that how like this space is so new and there's so much that we can kind of do. And if we, we want to put out a project and put it out there, but sometimes it doesn't work. That doesn't mean it's not for you. What means is you get back up on the horse and you rethink this and you try again. And I just love what you've said about that. Right. I have a question about NFT photography in general. Where do you think... It's going and how can photographers of all shapes and sizes and skill levels utilize NFTs for their art, for their businesses? How, how, what would you say? That's a great question. Just like photography in general, there's so many different aspects of it that make it fun. So you've got portraits, you've got wedding photography, you've got fine art landscapes, you've got travel photography, social media influencing. It has so many different avenues. And I think 99% of those things can be adapted to NFT spaces. So I've taken more of a social media and fine art approach to it where I sell a NFT and then you get a high resolution print sent to you that you can then use for wall art, right? If you want to use it for the wallpaper of your computer or if you want to send it to a print gallery and get it printed and blown up on aluminum on your wall for your wall art, you can do both of those things. I'm also coming out with a travel guide for Alaska if you're going in the winter, places to go, things to do. So I'm, I'm taking more of a holistic approach to it. But you could very well put up a single one of one for you know X amount of dollars or even as an auction piece. And that could be just a fine art print and you don't need to have anything else associated with it. With portraits, I think you could do the same thing where you, you could, you know, I think... I have a lot of ideas as far as like the NFT space. I think with photography, one of the things that could be revolutionary is localized NFTs where you could say you're from a certain area and you could find somebody online who did portraiture or anything like that and you could buy it as an NFT and then they could go take that portrait for you. I don't know. The, the space is just so new and there's so many different aspects of photography that you could incorporate into NFTs. I think you'd sell classes. I think that would be another huge one for the photography space is if you could sign up to take an NFT photography class and you could talk about why certain things are popular, you know, starting a discord, what it takes to be, you know, a photographer and how it's different, just intro to photography classes. I think a lot of that stuff will start popping up. 
And I think stacks in particular will be really, really popular for that space because we're still such a small pond in the space of like, you know, some of these other huge, you know, rareable and some of these other platforms that are specifically designed for photography. I think we're going to, we're going to see a renaissance or we're going to see it blowing up for photographers because of the freedom it allows. And I mean, we have such a great space for connection still. It's still so new that you can, you know, find out about a photographer early on and be involved in their growing and, you know, honestly selling their work later for much more than you initially minted it for. So I think we're going to see a big, a big movement. Yeah. And I think Stacks is, is really unique in that because it is so small at the moment that you really do get to meet everybody like you alluded to earlier of just like you can hop in other discords and actually make connections and those connections can really really pay off in the end when you're trying to do your own thing and you don't need to shill anymore because you've made genuine connections with genuine people. I have a question about, so you kind of alluded to this where you're doing some stuff with a guidebook for Alaska, but what is the next step? I think refining our process is the next step for Of All Nation Adventurers. The idea, the premise of it is that the people who are in the Discord, the people who hold NFTs, get to choose the next destination that they want us to travel to, right? And so if you minted the Alaska collection, that's awesome. Where do you want me to go now? Like, where do you want your fine art photography from? You get to choose yourself. And so I think the next step will be taking a vote, taking a poll, choosing where we go, and how often they want mints coming out. Because if you, you know, if you only want two or three, it doesn't make sense for me to go on five or six trips a year. And so I think our next step is going to be choosing where we go, choosing what type of NFTs they want, and setting as a community expectations for the amount of photos that will be minted and what type of benefits they're, they're getting. I want to make sure that these are useful, tangible things for the people that are a part of these adventures. The, other, the next step as well will be creating a DAO. Um, still diving in and trying to understand more about that myself. I by no means am an expert at any of these setups, but I want to. I want there to be a return on investment for the people who have been involved in the adventures um, and an opportunity to create a charitable organization and support other people who are trying to get out and you know explore the world, whether they're professional adventurers and we're able to finance their trips or if there are people, members of our own community who have bucket list adventures, you know, how can we, how can we facilitate that growth for them? Those are some of the, the things that I'm playing around with and things that are in our roadmap that we're trying to refine currently. Okay. Okay. You just kind of blew my mind. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else picked up on it, but what I heard you say is you are disrupting the whole commission process of how to work with an artist that's mm. that's basically what you're doing suddenly it's not this like oh hello i would like you to go to this place and take photos of these things for me and then you sell them to me for pennies and then you go about your way and these are my photos now it's like mm. you're democratizing the whole thing and it's like all right community where do you want your photos from what do you 100%. want to see and i will give you my artistic eye of that request when I'm out there doing the thing. That's like, that's amazing, man. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole, that's the whole point of doing this was with social media. There's so many times where you're like, this person takes such good shots. I would love if they visited X, Y, Z place. That means so much to me, you know, and then there's a whole community of people who feel the same way. And now we have the ability to do that and I can, you know, I can, I can afford to do that from them buying those NFTs and we can really make, you know, artists to consumer sales so much more intimate and so much more personal than we ever before. And that's what this is allowing. Yeah. I mean, that's incredible. Um, I'm really, I'm Thank just you. really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited about it, you know, and personally, I have a lot of friends who are photographers. They're they're portrait photographers, uh, wedding photographers, you know, family photographers, people that are doing this incredible work. But sometimes it's like for them, it's like pulling teeth trying to get people to hire them to do this stuff, you know. And these are genuinely some of the best artists that I know. Some of the people with the best, you know, 
eyes for composition and just beauty that I know personally. So what, what would your advice be to my friends who are photographers if they're thinking about getting into um, NFTs and set, doing doing stuff in the NFT space to fund their work? Because I'm literally going to send this interview to all my photographer friends. You know, I have a couple of key things of advice. One, connect with a developer, connect with somebody where you can be a bigger fish in a small pond, right? We, we look at like Rarible and we look at OpenSea and it's just such a large market that it's so hard to make a dent. One of the things I really liked about the Stacks ecosystem was that I could make a name for myself relatively quickly in the space because there wasn't a whole lot of competition. So, you know, being introduced to Plutus and like understanding, I had, I had actually, we had talked in person because I wanted the emotion behind his sentences. I wanted to know, you know, this space is new, it's exciting, but what, what can I do? What can I do for my community to make it better? The other thing that I would say for new photographers is to look and to listen and to spend time understanding what the community wants and what you are able to give. If you are a portrait photographer, how can I adapt portrait photography to the NFT space and make it desirable for a large number of people in this community? Yeah, I, just doing research, connecting with other photographers, huge. Celebrate each other's successes. This isn't a competition, right? There's enough for all of us to be here, <laughs> you know? So connecting with other people that are in the space that do what you do or are adjacent to what you do and asking for their advice, asking for connections, being friendly, being personable. You know, the things that brought you your business in the real world are the things that will get you your business in NFTs. <laughs> Making genuine connections, authentic connections, being authentic to yourself and selling not just your art, but selling who you are and why is it important to you will do more for you than, you know, any community manager or any, you know, project ever could. Get people to be a team. Don't try and do everything yourself. Brett, which has also been on the show, is my community manager. And without him, none of this would be possible. So, you know, getting people on your team to help you be a success and who see the vision is probably, you know, one of the most paramount things you can do if you really want to make it in the space in my mind. Man, this is so good. Levi, you, this advice is fantastic. I love the authenticity that you're bringing to this. And I'm obviously a huge fan. I'm in the Discord. I'm the one who requested Northern Whites. Like, <laughs> <laughs> did I get one? No. Am I still happy with what I got? Yes, because you're just that good. And I'm so excited to see how this develops and where you're going next. I've already requested for things in the Discord of where I want you to go that are near yeah. and dear to my heart. So where can people find you? How can people follow along on the next journey of what Levi's doing? So uh, the easiest places and the most places that I'm active are probably social media. So OAN underscore media is my Instagram or my Twitter hang handle. Sorry. That's probably the place that's easiest to reach me. We have a Discord as well. You can also find me if you're part of the Byzantium Discord. I have my own separate channel there that you can follow along, or it's got links to my Discord as well. I also am very active on Instagram. Of All Nations Media is my handle there. So feel free to reach out. The other thing I wanted to just tell any of the viewers is that I am open to any questions. If you have questions about camera settings or adventure tips or where you should go next, please, please, please shoot me a message. It makes my day to communicate with the community and to engage with everyone out there. Awesome. Levi, thank you so much. And to everyone listening, this is not financial advice, but this is artistic <laughs> advice. Get some good yes. art for your walls because it does make things better. And 100%. Levi's, Levi's art is one of those things that is meant to I be do. put on a wall as big as possible. So Levi, thank you so much for being on the show. And it was a pleasure talking to you. Oh, thank you both so much for having me on. I've been watching all of the podcasts and trying to work up the courage to be on myself. So I'm excited to be a part of this process and watch your guys' channel grow as well. Thanks so much for listening to Airdrop. If you want to know more about Levi, we put a list in the description where you can go find ways to contact him so that together we can pressure him to take some of those nighttime Milky Way shots. Ooh.
I love star photography. That would be that would be a pretty sick collection. Make sure to follow Airdrop on Twitter at Airdrop Show, and please rate and review this podcast so more people can find us and we can get more people learning about NFTs. And remember, beautiful things don't ask for attention. Nah. <laughs>